Hey everyone, this is William, and I just wanted to share a little bit of a reflection tonight with you, mainly on the gospel reading for Mass Today, Wednesday, uh, the 23rd of September. And um, in the gospel today, we heard from the ninth chapter of Luke, so I'll just read it, read it for you here, and then... Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about it. So it says, He summoned the twelve and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. He said to them, Take nothing for the journey, neither walking stick nor sack nor food nor money, and let no one take a second tunic. Whatever house you enter, stay there and leave from there. And as for those who do not welcome you, when you leave that town, shake the dust from your feet in testimony against them. Then they set out and went from village to village, proclaiming the good news and curing diseases everywhere. That's the gospel of the Lord. And so, um, and just hearing this, this reading really made me uh, especially reflect on just what Jesus sent his 12 apostles to do at first. And it says in verse 2, he sent them to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal. And I just really fascinated by that where it's like yeah obviously proclaim the kingdom of god like that's that's the thing but like hand in hand with that um he sent them to heal and just like thinking about how how healing um is just like so so integral to the preaching of the gospel um it's really, really, I just, it just struck me this morning when I heard it. Um, and not just physical healing, but, but he gives them authority over all demons and to cure diseases. So it's, I think what that's telling us is that Jesus isn't concerned just with one aspect of us, of our health, but he wants to give us healing in our whole person as we're not just body we're not just a soul trapped in a body but we're a body and soul integrally united and the gift of eternal life that he offers to us is you know the gift of resurrection that that we will um be resurrected as body and soul and so the healing that he desires to give us is for our whole person. And that goes hand in hand. You know, they're, they're integrally connected. And, you know, even just like that, that last verse, where it's, you know, he's saying then what the, the apostles did, you know, going out, they, they did what they were told. And they went out to village to village and they proclaimed the good news and they cured diseases everywhere. It, says, it doesn't just say some diseases. It says not just some places. They cured diseases everywhere. And I think to, today is also the memorial of St. Padre Pio. And I think he really understood that well. Um, and he was really given grace to live that well. Just an amazing saint um, who didn't live that long ago. Because um, he just did so many healing miracles, not just in his monastery in Italy, but everywhere. And it went hand in hand with his preaching the gospel of like all of all the miracles that he did. Were, the point is always um, to lead us to the fullness of life in Jesus Christ, to to believe in his gospel. And because part of, part of the reason I think of that, particularly with Padre Pio, is 
you know, and that, that idea of, you know, curing diseases everywhere. Um, just the universal mission of healing is that, you know, he could bilocate. He's given that, that rare ability to actually be in multiple places at once. It's crazy, Mir a miracle. Um, but, but a real um, experience of God's supernatural power. And so, like, lots of people have stories of, of the amazing miracles that he, he worked. Um, and my family has a story like that, too, where my, my great-great-grandmother, Angela Lejeune Buckley, was, um, was alive in the 1950s. Uh, and she uh, fell down the stairs and broke her hip. Um, in sometime in the 1950s when Padre Pio was alive. He was alive living in Italy. And, um, and she went to the hospital and apparently this, what the story goes at that point is that um, they did x-rays and, and the doctors said that um, there wasn't really anything they could do to, to fix the broken hip um, immediately. And so that night, you know, when she was admitted to the hospital, um, she woke up in the middle of the night and saw Padre Pio in her hospital room. Uh, and he said to her, don't worry, you're, you're going to wake up tomorrow and go home. And <laughs> so she did. She woke up the next day, got up, went home. Uh, <laughs> and okay, and so the doctors made her come back and do a second set of x-rays and the hip was, was completely healed um, and it's just things like that it's like some, sometimes that's how God works um, he doesn't always work in such, such an obviously supernatural way but he does sometimes because um, the bottom line is that part of his gospel isn't just this body isn't just you know a, a a cage that we're trapped in that doesn't matter um he cares about us entirely and he wants to raise us entirely to eternal life he wants to resurrect us that's that's the the faith that we have as catholics is that Jesus' resurrection is body and soul. And the resurrection that he promises us is body and soul. And so, and so these miracles of healing are, are a great gift for us to recognize that, first of all, God is real. His supernatural healing power is real. And to not be afraid to pray for that and to and to greatly desire that whether it happens here in this moment or we have to wait longer but also to to point us to the reality that um, that that the resurrection of the body is is our Christian hope that's that's our hope and so that means that that this body you know, that's become a temple of the Holy Spirit um, by our baptism, it becomes a tabernacle for the Lord Jesus Christ every time we receive the Eucharist. Um, this body matters. And part, an integral part, a necessary part of the, the gospel that the Lord has proclaimed to us that the gospel that he sent his, his apostles to proclaim to the whole world is, is healing, is, is healing, curing our diseases, casting out our demons, healing us body and soul. And so um, on this memorial of, of St. Padre Pio, or if you see this tomorrow or some other day, um, and what I would encourage you is be bold in your prayer. Don't be afraid 
to pray for healing, even if it seems impossible. Healing of physical healing and spiritual healing, because we all need both. We all need the Lord's mercy um, to heal our souls. We all need the Lord's mercy to heal our bodies. Now, we're not necessarily in control of when that healing comes. Part of God's, you know, the, the mystery of, of God's will is that, that we're not in control of that timing, but, but we trust that his plan is, is good and that he has a good, um, that he's always working for, for our good. If we, we are open to him and, and trust him. And so whether that healing comes today or tomorrow or in 10 years or at the resurrection, um, that's his will. God did not make death. And he does not delight in the destruction of the living. God wants life. And so I encourage you um, to really be bold and to really pray for healing and to speak those words of life to someone who might he need to hear it. Um, so I ask St. Padre Pio, pray for us. Mother Mary, pray for us. All saints, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, have a good night, y'all.